called Castle Road that a friend of mine's yard just doing a bit of messing. This goes on quite a bit. Basically, you can legally drift here, like, with the permission of the owners. <laughs> he must have a million donuts done at this stage in, in the yard and in that sea area, you know? But uh, it's really good fun. And nothing can be said, you know, because if you do that anywhere, it's illegal. <laughs> Sierra and a starlet, front and drive starlet with the handbrake up. Just complete messing. But uh, this is their yard, like, so they'll be well good at it. <laughs> the appeal of drifting to people with not a lot of money is because you can just buy a cheap car and go drifting. Like, you don't have to go out and compete in events, but you get five, six people who are friends, all go out and buy Sierras or, or BMWs. They can just hire the track for whatever it costs them, 50 quid each for the day or half a day, and they can go down there with your friends and have just pure fun for the day, like, you know? Because you can watch your friend going around and he'll go sideways a little bit and you'll go, yeah, I can beat him. And you'll go out and you'll try it a bit more. It's, it's all fun, everyone is friends, everyone gets on. In Ireland, it's only in its infancy and it's, it's only as it, as it gets going and, and sponsors come on that it'll start to get really, really serious. But at the moment, it's just everyone's having so much fun doing it. Then he likes to modify his skyline <laughs> off of walls. Oh, and any character to your car. Walls and ditches and stuff, look. She's mint. There seems to be so many drivers over here that, that could beat anyone in Europe at the moment. If you go to any drifted event, They'd be paired off into twin battles and the amount of times that you just couldn't pick a winner, you know? Because so many fellas are so good that um, just anyone can win an event over here. Whereas in places like England especially, there's kind of two, three guys that are going to win and that's just it, you know? Well, we heard that they were running a, an exhibition event that the D1 was actually coming to Europe. So we were, we have to do this. Like, so we, um, we entered the driver's search which is a, a competition where they try and find um, drivers who are up against the Japanese drivers. You can qualify or whatever. So we entered that and we went to that day. Fear of bag of nerves, to be honest. As I think everyone was, because I don't think anyone drove 100% that day. Plus it was raining and it was dry and things like that. But we actually ended up getting um, top score in that and qualifying first, which was tremendous at the time. We were all um, psyched up in for the actual event. Silverstone was, was fantastic. I don't get the opportunity to go on a track like that, you know, and to enter in fourth gear in the first bend and at a hundred something miles and I'll just pull the handbrake and, and completely slide for the, for the next whatever, 500 metres or whatever it was. The actual show that is drifting, they invented it. They have professional drivers, professional teams, all driving the, the top men. And uh, they're just so far ahead of the game. Everything is sponsored and they just have nothing to worry about. The drivers don't, they just sit in and drive the cars. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think of this? What a beast. She's a beast. Built in a shed. <laughs> The car is just amazing. Like, we couldn't build a car that would have anything better on it than my car, you know? No expense was spared or anything. And uh, I like to think that I can drive it as well, so... We knew we'd give them a run for their money, and uh, I think we did. When it came to the actual Twiso rounds, which is a twin drift, I was paired up against Fukuda with a 400 brake horsepower um, S13. So that was not an ideal draw because uh, I thought he'd just blow me away in the straight before the corner, but it turned out that he didn't seem to be that much quicker at all. So we kind of entered the first spin together and I was just really stuck with him. My car grips really well and pulls really well. So, um, and we entered the second bin, he slipped wide as small as I just passed him up the inside, just simple out. It was, I was really surprised at how easy it is. And once I did that, I could have. I could have um, walked through a brick wall at that stage. I would, I would have been okay because I was on such a buzz after that. And in the second run, then he tried to, to make a gap where there wasn't any. He ended up making contact with my car. 
and putting me off, so he was excluded. So we actually went to the top eight then. And uh, we got um, Kazama, who is the, the Japanese champion. So that was a bit of a kick in the teeth. So we knew we had to um, pull something, really pull something out of the bag, because I don't think the Japanese were going to come to all the way from Europe and uh, leave this guy from Ireland beat their champions. So. In the end, we gave him a good run for his money, but there was no way we beat him hands down. So I think we, we didn't expect to, to go any further after that. We got finished sixth overall, which was very, very good. To come up against them and, and beat 10 of them was a massive feat. We just, we lost to five drivers who are five professional racing drivers. So I was pretty happy with that. I think the fact that we were only beaten by five of them was kind of, we put a, a cat amongst the pigeons, I think. And uh, after being at the event and, and being told what we could improve on watching the DVD, next time I, I'm fairly sure we can do better. I know I have built a car that, that's as good as theirs, you know. And the fact that I could build a car and drive it and beat oh, just the best of the best, like, would just mean just that would be just the ultimate. I, I couldn't think of anything better. To beat the, the Japanese at their own game and beat the top teams would be just a dream come true. Open doors for us, hopefully. <laughs>